Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another early game playbook video featuring Gong Sun Zan in the 190 start. So we'll be taking a look at about the first 10 turns or so of Gong Sun Zan's start on Legendary Difficulty. And to be honest, he's actually quite an easy faction to play. And in game, he's recommended as one of the recommended factions for beginners to try and given the starting situation of normal. And his playstyle focus is a balanced military and we'll talk about all that, um, but the reason why I think he's one of the easier faction to play is you do start out on the map at the far edge of the map, right? You're all the way in the corner, uh, not exactly at the corner, but pretty close to it. So you have a pretty safe border around the north for you to expand down. The only trouble that players could get into in the early game, especially new player, is the first dilemma event, which asks you to decide which faction nearby you want to attack and it will expose you to Yuan Shao's faction. So the problem here is Yuan Shao is quite difficult to deal with in the early game. So the longer you can delay meeting his faction, the better off you will be. So our strategy mainly involves around uh, pushing in the north to gain access to some land and some economy before approaching uh, Yuan Shao and dealing with him. And there's a lot of good opportunities in the first 10 turn to pick up some nice generals, some nice land, and take advantage of your military government, which gives you five unique inspector positions, which are basically administrators, but very specialized administrators. So when this says that you have limited availability of administrators, it's actually quite misleading. Uh, what basically the game does is it trade off uh, your early game administrators for five inspectors, who have to be one of each class, and they perform sort of like administrators, and they're treated as administrators in the game, but they provide different bonuses than a typical administrator. And you can still gain regular administrators with prestige points and reforms. But actually, at the end of the game, Gong Sun Zan as a faction by default will have the most administrator in the game at 15. You can get eight from prestige point rank ups, you can get two from reforms, and there's the five inspectors that you get to keep from your military government. So it's actually quite powerful for going both tall and wide as a faction. So it's pretty strong. And getting to know your inspectors and their bonuses is something you need to do uh, to maximize your potential as the faction. You also have two very nice, unique units. You have the level three variant of the White Horse Raiders. These are basic horse archers with 200 range. And then you have an upgraded version called the White Horse Fellows with 250 range. And both of them are decent charge bonus cavalry. So you can use them both as a skirmisher as well as a charge shock target. A very, very strong unit. And uh, we'll be using these quite a bit in the campaign. And I highly recommend you getting your generals to rank six just to get White Horse Fellows. The difference between the two is actually massive. 200 range, 250 range. That's a huge difference. So getting characters to rank 6 to use the White Horse Fellows is definitely recommended. And our unique building is a replacement for our administrative office. It's very similar, except for there's some military component to it. Uh, I don't actually recommend this building that much, but since you have so many administrators that you can go tall in multiple commanderies, you can definitely put this in as a 5th or 6th building. But the typical build uh, for the administrators or for the commanderies should be relatively the same. Uh, you want your standard base income with a couple multiplier buildings in the beginning. This is just not going to cut it early on. Uh, in the late game, when you have a need for a six building perhaps and you're running out of good things to build, this can be a good option because it does provide some public water and income from all sources and there's a branching variant that will provide some corruption reduction as well. Then lastly, we do start out with one noteworthy character in Zhao Yun, uh, who is probably one of the best duelists in the game because of his elemental vigorous uh, ability, which gives him insane amount of melee evasion and also damage on top of that. Uh, so it's nice to start out with him. And as a character, uh, Gong Sun Zan himself has the brave, indecisive, and determined traits. Uh, nothing too fancy here. One of our weaknesses is that we are Vanguard, so we start out with much lower uh, authority which causes quite a bit of satisfaction issue on Legendary Difficulty. But we do have a nice list of background bonuses from the Iron Fist General, which is our background title. We get 25% extra post-battle loot income, 
So the more we fight, the more money we can make, which is great, uh, because we are going to be doing quite a bit of fighting in the north, and that's going to be one source of additional income to support us, because most commanderies in the north, unfortunately, are quite poor. Uh, they're usually one county uh, smaller commanderies generating slightly less income than say commanderies down south. We also have a nice recruitment discount for range cavalry unit. So this 25% combined with other bonuses say the vanguard inspector can actually get you free recruitment to range cavalry unit and your range cavalry unit obviously is your unique unit. So that's actually quite powerful. You can play a style of defensive tall commanderies where you have administrators or inspectors and you give them freely recruited white horse fellows. And that's a nice retinue to be put into the garrison and you get free upkeep for all administrators being deployed in the actual garrisons. All they need to do is be on your bench, not on the field leading an army. And you get basically these nice units that you recruit for free and then you recall them. They go to the commandery and it's free upkeep very powerful defense mechanism saves you a lot of money from building things like military infrastructure which in my opinion is just complete waste of money and lastly we get plus three starting ranks for all cavalry unit so this is really encouraging us to go pretty much all cavalry uh, as much as we can and since we have access to one horse uh, pasture in the north here and access eventually to the horse pastures out west we can really push for a strategy where we play a ton of cavalry units uh, when playing as Gongsun Zan, which is quite fun. It's a little bit micro-intensive, but it does work very well. So that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll be jumping into game. We'll be doing this on Legendary, Legendary 40 Minute. And the patch that I'm doing this on is patch 1.7.0. I understand that as of recording, patch 1.7.1 beta is available to be opt-in, uh, but due to a certain uh, a number of campaigns that I'm currently involved in and also the new changes does bring small errors that needs to be hotfixed. For example, the Han faction in the beginning is not at war with the right factions. So we won't be updating into that. And it's not going to affect us that much for this guide since we start over here in the north and away from one of the major changes on the map, which is around Luoyang. So it's not really going to affect your gameplay. You can definitely use the same strategy if you're playing on the beta and you can you know, change things once you get down there. Since this is an early game guide, it's not going to affect you. So let's hop into game and see how we play out our first 10 turns or so. Dongzi 联军即将瓦解 and Lord Gong Sun Zan. China is in chaos, but so far from the capital, there's little you can do to quell the madness. Perhaps it's time to utilize your local strength as a respected border lord. Liu Yu, your old mentor, has lost his vigor in his lands, may be better managed by you. Likewise, Gong Sun Zhu is a kin, but the border cannot be held by a weak lord. You must consider how your presence and power may aid all of China. So first off, Gong Sun Du is not our kin. Uh, this is a mistake, historical heir. We do have the same family name, but we're not from the same clan. And um, we have to basically take care of these two neighbors and claim some Han Empire territory to start off the game. And we want to engage in the following general uh, right in front of us from the Han army to take some taste of victory bonus, very standard. And we just first take stock of our start. You see that we have 
Yu Bei Ping, which is over here. We have the capital, and that's all we have. It's a town, so very low level settlement, but it does give advantage of being able to loop the enemy if you want. Uh, but this guide will not require you to loop the enemy. We'll be on offense to attack um, Guangyang over here. Uh, but it is an option if you do want to turtle up. In the early game, it's very hard to get this to a small city rapidly uh, without spending too much money. So you do have that option. And one of the best generals you have to loop is going to be your wife who does start out with the stubborn trait, making her unbreakable. So she's going to be quite useful there. Aside from that, uh, the early targets that you have is the Iron Mine, which is your turn one mission to take. And then completing Yu Bei Ping's trading port uh, is an obvious choice in the early game as well, so that you can have a nice supplement income from it. Now, there is the possibility that Tai Shi Ci will sell up and try to take this from you after you take it. He's one of the few aggressive Han armies, but that is totally fine. Uh, we're gonna use the encampment trick to actually convince him to not fight us. Uh, we're not actually gonna loop him with the encampment trick. That's what I wanted to do initially when testing this out, but it seems like um, most of the time when he see you having an army encamped, uh, your wife's army mainly, they will actually not attack. And sometimes he gets called away to Kunrun through the event, uh, but most of the time uh, it's pretty safe. And even if they do attack, using the trade port or using encampment, it's a pretty easy defensive fight against them. But the first thing we're going to do is diplomacy, because we do have that option in the beginning uh, to try to trade. Now, early on, it's very hard to get a trade agreement because Liu doesn't like us. Uh, that's fine. You can look at some items right now if you want. Uh, this is a good opportunity to perhaps get a auxiliary trade if you want something uh, very much. I guess the item you'll be looking for is philosophers, concubines, legalist fanatic, anything to boost satisfaction would help you a ton on legendary difficulty. Uh, it's not a must, but this is a definitely a good opportunity to do so. Shaman is also quite a nice item to have if you're really into capturing enemy generals 10% is the best boost you get from a follower position and that might be worth a trade uh, if you're interested in that obviously your game is going to be quite different from ours in terms of what gets rolled on the first turn master craftsman is quite good but we don't actually need to trade with Liu Yu since he's our first target so he's most likely going to equip this item on himself and we have a good chance of capturing him uh, during our fight against him to take this item off of him so save yourself some money to trade with him and right now we don't really need to do anything so i don't see any item that's you know to die for sure the shaman would be nice but i don't know if it's actually worth our time let's see how much he's going to charge for it it being a bronze item i'm guessing around eight points right 8.8 .8. We don't have any food to start, that's one of our other weakness, which often tempts a player to take the fishing port for some food. Don't do that. You don't actually need that much food early on, and taking Guangyang would actually give you some food, because he's actually going to build it out with the land development there, so you can use that food early on to kind of supply yourself. You can also consider putting in an administrator or inspector with the abundant skill, which gives you 5 food to tide you over. And Dai can obviously be a good uh, utility commander since it only has the horse pasture. So you can build land development, government support, and a state workshop, and then close that up with a uh, conscription building for the military bonuses. And that's pretty much a good food production area for you. So since we're thinking about wiping him out, we'll get some food from his settlements. Therefore, we should stay away from Bohai. The main reason is once we take Bohai, we gain vision into Han Fu, and most importantly, vision into Yuan Shao, which gets you a lot of trouble early on. Having this as a buffer zone to buy you some time is very important. Um, so if we do want this item, we would have to throw him a bunch of stuff, and we don't have a bunch of stuff at the start. You always start out with the Stone Pig, and I believe the Devious Attendant. Everything else is rolled on turn 1, and in this case, we didn't get many good items, so we really can't afford this trade. So we're just going to opt away from it. As you can see, we got a quite a bad haul, but it's fine. Uh, water clock is pretty useful for replenishment. We can definitely put that to good use. And the only thing that we have to do now is do the first two battles. You can obviously fight these to be a bit cleaner. And Zhao Qian is not exactly the best general to take. There's nothing too special about him. 
I wouldn't sweat too much about uh, trying to keep him alive. If you can fight this manually, uh, since you have the time, we're trying to save some time here, you can definitely ask him for a duel and get a lot of experience to help you rank up because we would like to be rank 6 uh, so that we can recruit more of the White Horse Fellows as soon as we can. But for us, we're just going to delegate this and most likely he will die. If you do capture him, I would just release. But we did capture him. So you can take a look at his traits. It's pretty bad. So highly recommend just releasing for extra income. If you don't capture him, totally fine as well. 200 less is not going to kill your game. Alrighty, we got Taste of Victory. And our next target is to take the Iron Mine here. We get support of the people. Pretty standard early game bonus. Just a little bit of public order and faction support. We'll also be delegating this battle as well. You can obviously also fight this to save some casualties, but it's only going to matter very little in terms of diplomacy. Uh, you might get an extra couple uh, coins from Gong Sun Du and give him a trade route after taking this territory, but overall not a big deal. And we'll occupy. Uh, unfortunately, it's only a level 1 iron mine. And now we have the mission to construct something in Yobei Ping. And once we do, we get your economy grows, which we're going to try to take advantage of once again to help us uh, get our early economy going. So the main thing is once we take this, the road now leads to Gong Sun Duo's capital. So we can actually get a trade deal that's positive in value. Point two. If we kept the army full health by fighting it, we might get slightly higher value here, but not really that high enough to ask him for money. Because if you look at, you know, when you request, it starts out 1.8. It's quite high. We don't have any food to buffer this. We can't offer him non-aggression because we already have it. And this is a big departure from some of my earlier guides on Gong Sun Zan where I recommend wiping out Gong Sun Du early on. Now, there's a reason why we made that big change uh, to strategy here, because it used to be there was not this map expansion before patch 1.6 and you could just wipe them out with two territories it was very clean you had the corner and you can turn around and do the rest without wasting too much time now there is a huge piece of land over here that's very difficult to traverse through uh, no road and you are exposed to looters through these faction council proposals so it's actually better to keep him as a friend for as long as he's willing to have you. Because you do start out with the non-aggression pack, and he does start out as peaceful, which is very nice. Um, so just give him the trade deal straight, no additional money. You get 329 per turn from him. Um, that's pretty decent, and we'll just take it. And he shouldn't really attack us. Uh, that should be okay. And now we can focus our economy for a few turns as we look to take this. This is a level 1 trade port as well, so you can definitely take it with just a few generals and a unit, and we're going to do just that. We're going to actually start disbanding because diplomacy is over. Not going to really make a deal with them because we're about to go to war with them. We will keep our white horse fella because we cannot recruit him back if we do delete him because we're only rank 3. And we will not recall Zhao Yin yet because I want him to become the administrator here in Yubei Ping because he has the highest amount of expertise in my army right now so he's going to give the most construction cost discount for us and the only position he can take is something called industrial inspector so this is a faction mechanic that we have to explain now so here we have a rule of inspectors that's specialized for Gong Sun Zan. each position can only go to a corresponding class industrial is sentinel Government is commanders, military is vanguards, uh, agriculture is champions, economy is strategists, and each one will provide a slightly different bonus than the typical bonus of an administrator, which is 15% to all income sources, and also 30% corruption reduction, and one extra army slot. Inspectors do not provide the army slot. Inspectors also do not provide the 15% to all income. It does provide the 30% corruption reduction. What, it's, what else it provides instead is more specialized to the class. So for example, when we open up the administrator menu here, you see for economic inspectors or the strategist, 
you get minus one construction time for learning and market building, so blue building. So color matching here. If it's a blue uh, class, you get minus one construction time for those blue buildings, and you get 50% additional income to commerce. So it's more specialized. And that's actually better in some instances and worse in others. So for example, here in Yubei Ping, where we have a trade port, it's going to be better than 15% to all because we're going to have more commerce income here than any other type of income, depending on how we build it, of course, but typically. And you're going to benefit more from having an economic inspector. Unfortunately, we're not going to use an economic inspector early on because we want to build up the commandery quicker and cheaper. And the reason why we can do it quicker and cheaper is that we have a blue building build. We have the inn. And the best combo for early game economy uh, in a setup like this is in state workshop, private workshop. So guess what we're missing? We're missing state workshop, private workshop, because state workshop gives you another base income from industry, private workshop boosts both industry and uh, commerce. So it's a good combo here with everything else we have. Therefore, what we really want is the industrial inspector because we get minus one construct time to all purple buildings and we get 25% income from industry. So that's going to help us a little bit. Eventually, we'll shift this. Uh, Zhao Yun will be shifted to Guangyang, where there is an iron mine, where we get more industry income. And uh, we'll shift some strategists back into Yubei Ping in the future. But in the early game, we're going to use Zhao Yun here. Uh, the reason why we don't recall him is that if we recall him right now, he goes on cooldown and we can't put him in. And also, he's very angry at us for demand or desire for higher court positions. Uh, we have very low authority, as we mentioned. So satisfaction on legendary difficulty with that 10 point against general discontent is going to hurt us. So we're going to slot him in right here. And if you're curious about other bonuses, government gives you peasantry uh, income boost. Also, minus one construction time for yellow buildings. Military is actually very powerful. Military gives you 15% recruitment cost discount. This is pretty underrated. Uh, if you are seeking to have a military center, which Dai, in my opinion, is very good uh, as a military recruitment center, you can definitely throw in a military inspector then, and you get a pretty nice recruitment discount that can be compounded with instinct recruitment discount, with um, your faction council position, uh, the Grand Commandant's 10%, you also have the reform, which is 8%. You also have instinct boost. You can easily get to 100% for your cavalry units, your special cavalry units that has additional 25%, and you can have free units coming out. That's really, really powerful. And then uh, commerce we already mentioned. Agriculture is food production. This is for champions. So that's pretty much the difference for all of these. And uh, we're looking for this one. And we're going to throw Zhao Yun right in there. So Zhao Yun's here. Things are going to be cheaper. And we're going to construct a building uh, that can take us one turn. We're looking for a state workshop, private workshop, as we mentioned. Uh, state workshop should be built first. Also, we can't build private into a small city, but it should be built first because it has actual base income added to your commandery. And we can put an assignment in for Gong Sun Xu come in here to shorten time, saving costs. That's also our son. He could use a few levels as our heir. And that's the setup for our early game commandery here as we look to build things up. And once this finishes and that comes online, we'll also see your economy grow come online. So we're getting minus three turns construction to purple buildings combined with this, this, and your economy grows. And minus, I think, 26% from Zhao Yun. Right. Minus 26% from Zhao Yun. Minus another 10% here. Minus 20% from... Uh, the economy grows, so we're saving like 56% in terms of building up. Uh, that's going to be very central early game. And we're not done. Uh, we don't like all our generals. Some of these guys are quite useless. Uh, Tiankai eventually will become one of our vassals, um, but we're not really going to use him. He doesn't really have any outstanding traits. Uh, usually you're on the lookout for generals who has good traits to be administrators since you need one from every class. Uh, but he's just not one of them. We're not going to kick out our son, but we could switch up some of his items. Right now, he also has low authority because he is a sentinel. Uh, we can shift his sword to this, shift his clothes to this. And uh, if you do have any items, you always have the Devious Attendant. And we're just trying to inch him closer to two points. But unfortunately, we don't have anything else, so we can't do much. Uh, still going to be one point. It's, it's quite sad. Uh, how low his authority is. 
I mean, we don't have a lot either, so I guess we can't complain. We only have five points for everyone. Uh, so that's kind of the item setup. And then we're going to start firing generals. Uh, Yan Gong, also not as good. Uh, he tends to be pretty satisfied himself, but we just don't need him early on. We have better choices in the future. He's also very lowly ranked. Um, it's going to take quite a while to get him to where we want him. That is rank 6. So he's gone. Uh, Guan Jing actually can be kept in case you don't get a good early game strategist. He gets along with Gong Sun Zan and Zhao Yun. And also he starts out with Humble, which makes him quite easy to keep happy even when he ranks up because he has no desire for higher office. He starts out with resourcefulness. So if you do go trebuchet for the early game attack, he's a good substitute in case you don't get a good unique strategist come to you uh, next spring. And uh, Cautious is okay, Clever is okay. He also has a pretty interesting background title. It's unique, uh, Cautious Strategist, which gives him 15% extra ammo for own retinue. That is quite nice. Basically think of that as half of a burn trait. There's no debuff on enemy, but you get the same bonus for your own units. So we're gonna keep him as a character that we could potentially use as our first strategist. We're also keeping our wife. Um, wife and son are both free characters. We mentioned she's really good at looping because she has stubborn. And uh, everyone else we mentioned gets to leave our faction. And we're just gonna dismiss them. No need to banish for extra 1600 and make everyone ha unhappy for a few turns. Uh, this is fine. Uh, this is our family tree. There's no one else. Wife, son, us. Uh, none of these three are good leaders, but we're stuck with them. And the reason why we say they're not good leaders is because there's bonus is not that good in terms of their skill tree. Like, Gongsun Zan is great just because he has background bonus that's favoring the whole faction in terms of military playstyle. But really, we're not going to get any good skills from the skill tree. And speaking of his skill tree, his skill tree is really bad in the beginning too, because you start out on this side, away from reach, away from flexibility, and it's going to take you quite a while to get there. Alright, so that's all set up. Zhao Yun can be recalled to heal up. We'll summon him back into the army next turn, and we're going to set up uh, our attack on Yu Ping very soon. So that should do it for us. Building's going, ministry is done, assignments assigned, we've taken all our land, I guess the only thing you can do is like move your army out a little bit and you're able to choose between garrisoning or not and that gives us a little bit of extra movement and that's pretty much it let's continue alrighty so remember that you have this mission active now for growing might to recruit two more units into your current uh, total number of units on the field which is only two and that's gonna give us 10% replenishment which is quite useful for whenever we decide to build up our first army and uh, we want to save that we don't want to go over four units or go to four units. So you can see that we can end up here and all we have to do is start here, stay on your own land, pop in Zhao Yun who's going to be fully healed and then move as far as you can because movement's actually quite difficult for Gong Sun Zan. You might even consider marching just to get closer. There's no enemy around and that way you can guarantee to uh, hit this. If you get greedy and want to heal for one more turn end up here, you can't reach this in one turn because we mentioned no reach on Gong Sun Zan. This is going to eventually be our first enemy. Um, it's not very strong. We'll be able to take care of them no problem. In the meantime, this first list of officers here given to you is the same every single game and none of them are any good. So we're going to save you some time and just say don't recruit anyone. And uh, we're going to continue to build up you can see how cheap things are going to get. So it looks like the same price as what we paid for earlier, but imagine without the discounting that we had. Uh, it's just really, really cheap, and we're going to build that up. We're also going to splurge on this iron mine. I'm usually quite against this before we can get shaft mining, but I think uh, with the way the reform tree is set up, uh, you can obviously take shaft mining early on for the 20% discount, but I don't think it's worth it. Uh, we might as well pay up the 20% uh, because we are not going to have access to a lot of iron mines and copper mines in the early game. There's just not that many of them in the north. So just pay up for one extra one is not going to hurt. And because we start out with regional commissioners as our first free reform, there's a really good argument to go for regional levy early on to get the 10% replenishment or uh, to eventually end up here which is something we want to do because we want those level 5 horse pastures to give us that additional discount for recruiting and upkeeping cavalry unit which is going to be our specialty and we're going to have access 
to most of these horse pastures in the north uh, quite early on because we do start out in the north. So because of that, I think the argument can be made that we want to extend down uh, this skill tree. And there's not going to be a lot of trade partners to go for this because we're already having difficulties trading with um, Liu Yu. We had to trade with Gongsun Du and there's really no one else around us to trade. Uh, Han Fu is a potential target, um, but this is debatable. I think since we are starting out over here, we might as well go all in over here on the red side. So that's kind of the early game play here. That's being built, that's being built, and uh, we're good to go. Um, let's continue. Alrighty, it's winter. Uh, nothing happening in notification land. We're taking this. It's a free delegate. Very, very small level one retinue. And we get to pick up more income for our territory. Some bonus experience for us. And now we're going to start rushing things because we don't have that many turns of your economy grow left. And we do want to end up with a pretty healthy economy just from our one commandery. So that's rushed. Let's build this. And we do have enough money to rush this as well. Uh, one turn rush would be pretty cheap. And then we want to build this in. We want to rush this next turn on our last turn for economy grow. So we can pop the commandery up as well to maximize our discount. And this army is going to slowly shift back over here. And we're going to look at next spring to see if we get any of the unique generals. Guo Jia, Lu Zhi are both targets we're looking for. If we don't, we have uh, Guan Jing as our backup. Alrighty, it's spring and we get our early game dilemma. Where we want to attack Liu Yu, but Yuan Shao wrote us a letter to attack Han Fu. And historically, the actual event is that we attack Han Fu under Yuan Shao's guidance, and then Han Fu decided to confederate with Yuan Shao, as in we got tricked. And that's going to expose us to Yuan Shao early on. We don't want to do that. So right now, the choice here is really between attacking Liu Yu or, you know, bid our time. We can also say no to both of these. I prefer to actually attack Liu Yu. That's our early game target. Might as well use this to do so. Uh, the reason why it says may be seen as an act of tre uh, treachery is because if you have any deals with him, you'll break those and you'll be treacherous for that. Untrustworthy. We don't have any deal with them. We purposely did that. So that we don't have to worry about that. Declare war. Build up a little relationship with our neighbor to the south. That works perfectly fine. And we're going to shift our army back towards the capital and now moment of truth Luger is here so Luger is our mentor historically we also have the ghetto Luger uh, what I mean by that is look at these two characters same age same exact age and I think they had the same exact naming character because Luger was this was the original Luger until Mandate of Heaven came out and they made him into a unique art different class obviously and they didn't Delete the former one. So we have both of them. And we have a, he has a fondness towards you. So you often will see him on this turn. He comes with two of his unique units. And um, it's a, quite a good grab. He's not a spy because there's no former faction. No one sent him to us. He just basically joined us. Uh, he's basically in retirement historically at this point, And he did end up joining Yuan Shao in 192 before dying of old age uh, soon after. Um, so we will be taking him this time. Anyone else interesting? Just taking a quick look. You're looking for traits that could boost any sort of administrator bonus income. Um, that's not bad. But I think we're going to pass on these guys. Uh, in the future, you might just want to make note in case he's still in your pool when you need him. Maybe then come back to him because he does have 10 additional percent to peasantry and also for more public order and his tree here have abundance have intuition and have wisdom and it's one away from trust these four skills are the ones that's going to give you bonuses to administrators so he's pretty much set um not bad at all and the fact that he can sit inside of a commander and give three more public order is also quite nice so definitely high on our list but i'm not going to recruit him now because it'd be kind of a waste of money what we can choose to do now is uh, send out our mentor maybe next turn. I think we want to recruit him. He's going to be in your pool for longer than a turn, so we don't have to 
pay for him now. We can pay for him when we get into the town. Maybe we should march this, right? Because we're coming back to defend. He's going to be thinking about attacking us, which is totally fine. He's going to get discouraged when he sees your army. And then you can counterattack him, which is our plan. Uh, Taishu usually appears around now. He could be sailing up here uh, to retake that trade port. It depends on what he wants to do. And we do have a setup to defeat him there as well. So don't worry about it. In terms of reform, as we mentioned, you do have a few choices. But I do think going all in on the red uh, is probably the way to go here. And we're going to start out with military markets. To get ourselves some deployables. Uh, military supplies also just more flexible to start out on this top branch in case we don't want to go here eventually we can go all in for these first and that will still be available Alrighty, uh we are on our last turn of economy growth we're going to try to maximize that by speeding up this construction popping that upgrade and uh we can actually speed up this one too you can see the price 2960 and if we speed it up, it costs us 650, so we actually have enough to get all this done. And that's going to put us at very, very low income, but it's going to be enough uh, to summon out our teacher next turn. I think it costs about 3,000 to get him. So at this point, you can choose if you want to keep him or not. Um, obviously, satisfaction is a small issue. You can give them an item. Um, he's still useful. I would keep him. I think that extra 15% is nice. And we can always use a couple more generals for assignments or administrators down the line. So let's continue here. Alrighty, in this case, Taishi didn't approach us over here. But if he does come for the trade port, all you need to do is summon your wife and have her encamp right outside. And the army actually would get confused and not attack. Uh, and if they do attack, the encampment and the trade port are both very, very easy to defend with a lot of towers. Drawing leveled up, we'll be picking up Elemental Vigor. It is the strongest, well it's what's making him the strongest duelist in the game because as he fight, he will gain progressively more melee evasion, he'll become unbreakable, he'll get double armor piercing damage, just makes him incredibly strong on top of his already very high uh, melee evasion from uh, his high expertise. So we'll be picking that up. And we'll be recruiting our teacher. So Vujra is going to come join us. About 3,000. You can't really save on this. 1,000 for recruiting him as a general. And then 2,250 for redeploying his units. Uh, if you could get flexibility, there's no way you can get two levels this early. And your son doesn't have access to it. So there's no way you can really save there. Uh, as for your son who's heir, you can go a couple ways here. The only skill he's really going to help you is diligence and understanding. So I typically push him down the second, uh, the bottom row here. And in the future, you definitely want to kind of switch air. He's really not a good air. So at least if you give him these skills, he can maybe be a good administrator for you. And with that said, we are going to recruit him. And that's going to activate the 10% additional uh, replenishment next turn. Uh, you can definitely just wait it out. You don't have to rush it. It's not going to make too much of a difference. You kind of want to save that for the tribuchets anyways. We'll, we'll get to the tribuchets very soon. Uh, the one issue you'll notice right away is that he is not happy right off the bat because he has pretty much a high desire for uh, court position, level 4. He will eventually also be a temporary administrator. Usually I make him the inspector for the economic bonus back in Yobei Ping when we do capture that we'll do a flip. I'll show you guys how to do the flip. Um, but right now the best option here is actually give him a title and the title you want to give him right now is general of the left. Uh, obviously right would save you more money this turn uh, but we're thinking about next turn as well. Next turn we're recruiting two tribuchets into this army so uh, he's going to be able to use that much better. And since we do have a water clock, we're going to give it away as well. It'll help replenishment and also help his satisfaction, keeping him afloat. And uh, that's it. Uh, let's continue here. Alrighty, so that other mission finished. Uh, we also get a new one, whole three territories. We gain momentum, which is 20% recruitment cost discount for three turns. Very useful for building up our first army. We complete that one right away. We also gain momentum for assignments, so we technically have six turn time frame to build out our army. So we have time, we don't have to build it out right now. Uh, but we're going to build out a little piece of it first, and there's a chance to gain more momentum 
uh, when we reach second Marquis, which is going to happen pretty soon too. So you have time to build up your first army on a pretty good uh, discount budget, especially if you can wait till you get Dai uh, to put in that, you know, inspector for Vanguard. You're also looking out for good Vanguards to show up. Ooh, Shenpei. Mm, we'll pass. He, he's semi-unique, but not that good. And you see his army moving up here. Um, it's not scary at all. Like You can even consider meeting him to fight him, but I would just take the mustering and let him decide. If he wants to take on uh, the iron mine, you can just loop the cavalry behind him and he cannot take it. There's there's no way he can take the iron mine because of the defensive battle and how it works. So we're going to just completely ignore him. I might not even care for the mustering of these because I want to be in striking distance here. Um, obviously, you see that he can also take your town, but once again, we can also... Uh, let's be a little bit more patient. We don't need to rush things. We're going to just stay put and pop out two of these trebuchets. And then we're going to flip him to general of the left. Uh, right. From left to right. To save on upkeep. Uh, that's going to save us the most money. Uh, we save plenty recruiting those, and we're also getting the 10% replenishment for growing might. That should speed up everyone's uh, replenishment to get them ready in fighting shape. We just need to wait two turns. So one turn here for mustering, one turn here without mustering, and then we attack the turn following that. We also gain a Grey Stallion. Zhao Yin can have that for extra expertise boost, which will save us a bit more money in terms of building up the commandery. We're out of cash, or else we would upgrade this. Um, that's fine. You have to spend money somewhere. And watch what he does. Let's continue. Alright, he took a baby step towards the iron mine, which is going to get him killed. Uh, obviously, everyone's game is going to be slightly different. He might not be taking this posturing position uh, in your game, but in ours, since he did come out and basically give away his army for free, uh, we will be attacking him here. He's going to retreat. And we're just going to give chase a little bit. Uh, now you can see he can't really move anywhere, and we'll just follow him back to town. He's most likely just going to retreat back, and we're going to follow him and attack him there, and we get a chance to heal up along the way. You see that Luger is still unhappy with us, but as long as it's not zero, he will stay with us, so it'll be okay. Um, his satisfaction is also concerning. He will lose up to six more points. He'll be at 13. We just don't have a good option because we didn't get any you know, concubines or philosophers. Just be patient. Uh, you'll be fine once you have a couple more commanderies. You can fill in more people for inspectors, and everyone's going to be pretty happy with you eventually. Uh, just this early stage is going to be a little bit more uh, difficult for you. So we do have money now. We will upgrade this, although that assignment timed out. So that was a bit unfortunate. We could have saved one extra turn. We could probably wait. Um, do we want to wait? Because it'll be two more turns before we can come back. We save 10%. It's not a lot of money. Let's just build it, and now our son can be off, and we can do assignment for uh, Guan Jing, as we do have quite a bit of commerce income here. So 75% commerce boost from him is going to net us quite a bit of income. So we're going to switch up the assignments now that co the construction phase of our commandery is pretty much over. Let's continue here. Alright, as we predicted, he ran back to town. We're going to be chasing him. Uh, we're missing a little bit of replenishment on these. It's totally fine. We'll basically reach them next turn. And once again, no one's no one's negative, so it's okay. Or oh, no one's zero. And we don't have much, and we're gonna put Guan Jing here to boost some income. And that's pretty much it. Waiting for our attack. Alrighty, uh, we got ourselves an item. Don't really need to worry about it. We got reforms at the start. We can definitely use it. Uh, it's not gonna change the battle at all. But as we mentioned, we're going to come down here and pick this one up as well, opening up our path to either go for the horse pasture build or to eventually get regional levy by taking down this side. Um, you just have to consider, you know, what your horse pasture level is right now, because this is level four unlock, level five unlock. If you pick it up and it's like level one, which I think it is at the beginning, yep, uh, you're going to need a couple of turns to get it to level three before you can even make use of that assignment or that reform. So maybe going for regional levy in the beginning just getting that 10 percent replenishment early on is what you're going to do the next three times and then you shift over here so that's just something to consider 
And we're gonna showcase this fight. This is the only challenging bit of this start. You see how, because we didn't interact with Han Fu, we didn't interact with Bo Hai, we don't see Yuan Shao. That's key. Not seeing him early on is gonna buy us a lot of time. And we have a pretty friendly neighbor behind us that we don't have to worry about. He can take care of the looters that will spawn over there. And uh, we will just take some land in the north first. We will eventually hit up with the Black Mountain Bandits who we wanna wipe out early. The trick against them, uh, just to get ahead of ourselves, it's not going to be something we'll cover in the early game guide, is don't end a turn on the road, right? Either be in ambush mode, be in encampment mode, or be inside of a city, because Zhang Yan's army can offensively ambush you. So in that sense, if you're in those three stands, or if you're in a garrison, you're safe from being ambushed. So you can slowly take him out that way. If you get ambushed on the road, you are very screwed. Let's just say that. Um, that's his only strength. His army quality is not good. You have a bunch of cavalry that can run over him. You have siege weapons. You have better generals. So in that regard, he's a pretty easy target. But you could get caught off guard if you get offensively ambushed by him. So that's the only thing to watch out for. All right, let's get this fight going. And you see that we're not favored, it's fine. We had Night Battle, uh, which is going to make things a lot more easier. And we have Flaming Shots, the whole town's going to burn. The only thing that can work against you if it rains. And even in that case, you can definitely beat them out pretty easily. Because one of the main issues that the enemy army has, despite the fact they have about four or five times your manpower, is a lot of it is Archer Militia units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's 840 units of archer militia, which are is completely useless because you know they don't fire at generals on higher difficulties. They're very weak in melee. You run them over. You have an unbreakable frontline unit in the defender of the empire. You have a splash damage charging cavalry shot cavalry unit in destroyer of treachery. You can kite at 250 range versus 180 range with your cavalry unit. Uh, the only thing that's going to give you difficulty is maybe a couple of the cavalry unit that they do have. They have two, but you can easily pick those off with your range uh, before you even have to fight him. And as I mentioned, this master craftsman is up for grab. We would like to have it. We didn't trade for it because we think we have a chance to grab it here. So let's start battle. Alrighty, so we're loaded up in here. A uh, nice dry night here in spring. And we're just gonna use our seed weapons to burn up the entire town. We're gonna choose to fight where all the towers are because we're gonna burn up everything. So there will be no more towers once we do actually start fighting. And they're not gonna charge out because they think our relative power levels about the same. You can check that on the bar before the battle. Uh, usually when they're extremely weak, where it's just a garrison, they will charge out. Or when they're extremely strong, where they think they can beat you, they will charge out. But in this instance, neither are true. So let's just get started. Uh, to save shots, we're just going to fire them individually just into the building quadrants because the fire is going to spread quite easily. We can even do this on fast. What are you doing? Why are you getting shot at? Why are you moving up? Oh my god. It's not going to hurt us in the grand scheme of things, but it is just annoying when they do that. Is it that hard to shoot at that thing without moving? There we go. Uh, to manually fire, you just hold down Alt uh, to see this aim circle show up. And then you right click to ask them to fire. And you pray they don't move forward. But you can see how the fire is going. Yeah, all these towers are going to be toast. Um, we're not done yet. There's still a couple towers here in the middle. That needs a shot. And... That needs a shot right there. Oh, that one's moving. That one's moving. Oh, is it, is it stop moving? Okay, good. Good. Let them let them twist a little bit. It's not stop moving forward. I mean, now the front towers are gone. It should be fine. Let the other two on the right side fire. Oh, we're good. We're good. Are we good though? Did we get the fire started on here? We got the fire started here. Alright, you guys fire shot here. Where's the other three shots? Oh, but that's good enough. 
that got us started. We might need to fire here because I think the fire didn't spread to this tower. I guess we could target this a little bit. And also hit some units along the way as we miss. And you can see the morale impact of night battle, of settlement destruction, of the fire getting shot around. There we go, that's a good hit. Uh, might as well aim for that. Seems like fire didn't spread that well there either. Ah, uh, no, it spread. My mistake. And we still have about 10 shots left. Uh, so the units we hate are spear units and cavalry units, so we'll be pounding the front here. And you can see everything's destroyed. Oh, there's that's still standing. Hmm, that's not supposed to happen. We'll let them fire one off here, and then we're going to aim at that. We miss. We we forty seven percent stop spreading at that point. Hmm. Here we go. Sixty three. It's gonna burn down. And that's gonna burn down. That's not burning down though. Let's just aim for a building. Uh, 33% is not good enough. You need to be above 50 to spread the fire. Hmm. I guess we don't need to take out these two interior ones. Kind of wasting too many shots on them. We'd we'll like to kill off more of the cavalry. Oh, there we go. The fire is gonna... Oh, that, that's fine. Perfect. Pound this group a little bit. And then we're going to use this unit with our superior range to uh, take out their spear units. Move over here. A couple more spear units on this side. We have a ton of ammo despite being on Vanguard. Just the base ammo on these guys are really, really high. And then we're just going to run in with these boys to clean up. We have a roar and a smash. Smash on Zhao Yun, roar on Gong Sun Zan. Should be quite simple. They only have 180 range, so it's very hard for them to even fight back. Yeah, I think it's time to just finish them. It's all archers now. There's one melee cav we smash when he gets close. Alright, let's pound this captain. Go, go, go. Are they going to brace against us? We can kind of move around that. Oh, he gave them unbreakable. Okay, they moved out of the way before that happened. I need to move Joy in for the smash. Oh, one of their strategies have the... Cool down one. We can see which one and maybe kill him. That's this one. Fire some arrows over. Come on, help them out. Oh, Zhao Yun lost his mount. Alright, we got him away. So now I should be able to use Smash and Roar. And I should be able to roar very soon. I'm still following him, which is not cool, but look at all these routing. Alright, they have minus A from that. Zhao Yun can, Zhao Yun can actually kill him. He's unbreakable, I think. Yeah. So we gotta go kill him as well. And if we want to use our cavalry to help, we can definitely do so. I'm gonna chase this group off. You guys can just... Sprinkle some shots on the T infantry. Where's our cavalry? Ah, try to bypass the tribuches. Come here and help. Oh, you got this. I'll chase off the infantry. They're very slow. They're heavily armored. Oh, trading some shots back. Swords out, we can charge too, you know. Oh, 
All right, Kunzun Zhao might need you on this side. Yeah, we're gonna smash him, no problem. Especially since we're on the ground, better attack speed that way. Might need to hit him one more time, not sure. Alright, they're getting chased off. That's an annoying unit that we really can't deal with. We get shot, we get injured, it's okay, we'll heal up. There's not any more strong target around after this fight anyways. Can we not capture this? We just need to kill him. He's the only thing that's unbreakable right now that's causing this battle to go along. Ow, getting picked off by a lot of range units. Gotta kill him. Oh, he's back. Oh, they gave himself unbreakable. We killed the strategist, now it's just him. We're taking a ton of casualty, I realize, but it's fine. That should be the win. Route, guys. Think about it. Your commander's all gone. There we go. Not the cleanest fight, but not too bad. Alrighty. So that's their main force gone. We lost 38 men. Most of them cavalry. Not a big deal, but it'll take a little bit to recover. We got his armor. Ah, not his item though. I would love to get this. Anyways, we'll take it. And at this point, it's turn 9, not even 10 turns, and we can do a couple shuffles. So this is more of an industry town, right? We have industry income from the iron mine, and eventually we would like to build state workshop here. We would like to change our build, but as I mentioned, he's preventing us with a little bit of food that we can eventually upgrade towards a small city. We need food, right? We don't have any food. But right now you can see that our commerce town has a sentinel and this town, if we just assign someone, we're gonna have to throw in a, you know, economic inspector, which we don't wanna do. So instead, Zhao Yun is gonna go to Chancellor for this turn to shuffle him out without making him feel like he got fired. And then for this town here, we're gonna put Lu Zhi in so he no longer feels desire for higher office. And then Zhao Yun comes back here next turn when he, the cooldown ends and he can come back in as the industrial inspector in Guangyang and everything will be good. And as for our main army, uh, we got a nice level up. We're definitely moving towards flexibility and reach. So that's what we're going to do here. And everyone should be decently happy uh, except for our heir and our uh, general here. He ranked up, which is a big issue here. No, it's not even the issue. The issue is just general discontent, um, everyone having low satisfaction. That's fine. Um, it's not like he's going to leave. Recently hired. This is always an issue. Why is my heir recently hired? He's our son. And uh, anyways, this is just something you have to kind of power through in the early game until you get some more items. He's going to lose the lack of purpose because we put him on assignment. Uh, we can definitely put him on assignment again when we get a chance in the future. Uh, but right now this is fine. We probably want to upgrade this for more food. Um, this is the other dilemma you have, the lack of food that you have. Uh, you can solve this by finding a general with abundance. And we mentioned a particular gentleman here who we could use for food production. We looked at him before. He's not. He's willing to spy, so he's not a spy. He has decent enough traits uh, for additional peasantry income and some public order. So you can definitely like snatch him right now and then once you take Dai, put him in and that's going to give you enough food to last you uh, in the early game to put at least everything to a small city or if not a city build. And going forward, I think this guide can end because it's actually quite simple. You take this, he might resummon himself here, uh, but it's going to be equally a uh, simple fight as this one because it'd be the same setup, he'll have an even smaller army and you just burn that town down to the crisp and uh, you win that fight and you wipe out this faction as a whole. That's all the land he has, you get yourself a horse pasture, make this your farmland territory. He already put a state workshop and a land development there, so it's a perfect build. Uh, this you will slowly phase out when this gets built up and then your target starts shifting down. Right now, Bohai is being controlled entirely by the Han Empire, that's your nice buffer zone. 
once you're good here with a decent economy, you see that you have three more turns to recruit units cheaply. Uh, you have a couple options here, actually. You don't have to go this route. If you do end up finding a Vanguard General, you can definitely go that route to give you even more discount. But if you desperately need food, this is definitely the guy to go to, right? You want to find someone with Abundance. Abundance is on Champions, also on Strategists. You can actually get this on Strategist too, to give you uh, some early game food. And basically at that point, you should have reached uh, second marquees, right? You're thinking about picking up a couple more prestige points here and there. And then once you hit that, you're going to get six more turns of this. So that's your opportunity to spike your first army to a full stack. And then you just march south. You take the Han territory here in Bohai. Depending on if you want to start out your war with Zhangyan early or late, you can choose to do that first or later. And then you're just going to press down. Uh, to meet Yuan Shao, who's most likely going to declare war on you. But by that time, with the full stack, you can take care of his spear units quite easily just because you have a bunch of you know, archers to take down his shieldless units. You have good siege weapons, better generals than him. Well, he has good generals now. It's not like he has generic ones, but Zhao Yun's still better than them, and you'll be just fine. So that's kind of how you get started. You hug the north, uh, you wipe out Liu Yu, and then you set up yourself for a pretty good future. Uh, keep Gong Sun Du around. He's not going to betray you on this current setup, uh, at least not in the early game. You know, with that peaceful personality and the fact that you have a starting non-aggression pack and a trade agreement, he will at least warn you if he's going to, you know, go to war with you by canceling your deal and such. And you don't really want this land at this point with the looter situation. So uh, just press on down, keep the High Empire as a buffer zone and develop your way. Uh, to at least a decent economy before going down to take on Yuan Shao. And then you run the north, uh, you can expand out west first to get more of those horse pasture that really sets you up uh, in terms of your army choice, imagining your entire army being full of white horse fellas and just you know conquering the rest uh, should be a pretty fun campaign. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and we'll see you all next time. Bye!